Inshallah, I just wanted to uh, give a short reminder because it's been a long time since we did that, right? Uh, and uh, Alhamdulillah, I've been traveling the past couple Fridays, so, so um, SubhanAllah, I just wanted to, when I was traveling, I recalled something that happened to me in the past. So uh, for those who didn't know, I, I lived in Saudi uh, and I worked as a teacher in, in one of the universities in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. So, you know, I would often just tell my, my wife and kids, yeah, let's pack up, let's, let's go somewhere. And I'll just drive, you know, I'll book a hotel somewhere. So at that point, I told my family, we're going to Medina, and we're just going to spend, spend our, our time there, inshallah. So, on our way there, I see like a, a busted airport sign somewhere in the middle of the desert. Right? Close to the city called Qasim, right? And I'm like, yo, no way there's an airport in, in this barren desert. You know, there's, there's nothing as far as I can see. And it says airport next exit. And I'm looking and there's nothing there. So me, I'm a very curious person. And I always take a lot of detours when I'm traveling out of sheer curiosity. You know, so I just took the exit and I'm like, okay, let me see where this airport quote unquote is. So I pulled up to this little building about one-fourth the size of Epic, right? And I pull up to it, and it turns out that that's the airport, right? There's literally one, you know, table. And uh, I look in the back, and there's some, like, you know, planes that look like they're being worked on, and planes that... It looked like a junkyard of planes, basically. And I'm like... No way, this is a functional airport. And I go in and I see a whole line of people. And they're all Egyptian. Right? And I'm like, oh, snap. That means they're, they're, <laughs> this place is operating. Allahu Akbar. So my wife is Egyptian. So I'm like, khalas, uh, these are my people. You know? So I went, I went in and uh, I asked the teller in the front. I cut the line just to ask a question. And I'm like, guys, uh, is there a plane? that's actually leaving? They're like, yeah, we're leaving in 45 minutes. There's a plane going to Cairo. I'm like, seriously? How much? And they gave me some like very cheap price. They're like, like $300 or something, $200, eh, some, something very cheap. They're like, how many seats do you have? They're like, yeah, we got our last two seats. I'm like, khair, yalla. Got me and my wife, we got two kids in our lap. Khair. There's no rules, by the way. <laughs> you know, we just put the kids on our lap. So... Uh, I'm like, you know, so I paid for the tickets and I come out and my wife was waiting for me. She's like, okay, khair. man, that took, uh, it, was, it took me like 10 minutes. Come out and I parked the car. She's like, where are you going? I'm like, I want to show you this airport. Let's bring the luggage and go. And then all of a sudden we're on this line. I'm like, yeah, we're going to Egypt. And she's like, but what about, you know, our plans? I'm like, no, no, khalas is gone. We're going to go see your cousins and your family and everybody. Khalas, uh, I changed my mind. So we went. And, you know, at that moment, I was happy. But then when I saw the plane, it was a whole different ballgame. Wallahi, ikhwan, it was one of the scariest, it was one of the scariest moments of my life. We ride in this plane, it's all gassing up. We had to walk about half a mile to get to it. And then we went up these stairs that were all squeaky and stuff. And then we get into this plane, we're sitting, and all the people, Allah Mubarak, they're mo mainly from the Sa'id part of, of Egypt, right? And they got their own lunches and dinners, and they got their own cheese and bread, and everybody, they're just having a good time. Egyptians are very happy people, you know? They make a, a, a delightful moment out of anything, right? So, so everybody's just chilling, and there's stuff coming out of the vent. Looked like gas. It wasn't the AC gas, right? It's some other leak. I don't know what it is. I'm an engineer, so I just had a hunch that it, there's something wrong with this plane. They try to turn on the plane, and it's not turning on. <laughs> and, and then I hear this loud sound, and then it turns off. The pilots come out, and they're two young Egyptian men, and they, they open the cabin where we put the luggage, all the way in the front. And they take out this manual, that looks like it's like the, man, the engineer manual of, of the plane. And they're looking through it, and one of them is like, 
I think this is the problem. The other one's like, nah, man, it has to be this one. You know, <laughs> wallahi. And they're just debating what the problem is. And I'm looking at my wife and, and nobody cares what's happening. They're all eating and having fun and joking around, kids running in the aisles. And I'm like, I'm telling my wife, yo, honey, I think this is our last flight ever, you know? <laughs> so here's my advice. Let's not talk because we know how marital talks go. Okay, so let's say shahada and just stay quiet for the rest of the, the flight. Alhamdulillah, they turned on the plane. It was the loudest plane ever. You know, it had the, the outside propellers. And, uh, you know, when it took off, alhamdulillah, he drifted a little bit on the runway. He's obviously practicing on us before he gets a job in a decent airline. So he takes off. And, you know, somehow when we land, he also drifts a little and he almost misses the whole runway. <laughs> runway. And subhanAllah, we make it there. We make it there in one piece, hence why I'm standing before you today. So, at that moment I realized how deficient I was in tawakkul ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? When we ride a plane, we put our full trust in the, in, in the pilot. Right? They could do anything. We don't know their credentials, qualifications, experience that they have, but we know it. It may, it may be like, they may not be trained enough, right? But because we, we think that, okay, if they're flying a plane, they have to be trained, right? How many times did we ask about the pilot's credentials when we took a flight on American Airlines, on United, whatever it is, right? We don't ask. We just expect there to be a certain level of, like a certain criteria. Tabiakhwan. At that moment, I realized one thing, and that stuck with me until today, that if Allah is steering my life, and He wrote, مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ He wrote everything, what we're going to do, and what we're going to leave behind us, what's going to happen to us, and how it's going to happen to us, and He's taking care of us all the time. And not only that, but he sends angels to protect us from the evils that may fall upon us. وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَ Right? Allah sends protectors around us. He's, we're, we're in Allah's protection all the time. How can we be sad from what Allah wrote for us? Or the direction that our life took? Or a calamity that befell us? When the one who's steering it, we should trust way more than that pilot who's flying that plane and we're trusting our life with. Right or wrong? So when, we, when we're living our life, we should know that the one that is steering us and taking us to different points and stations is Rabbul Alameen, is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, no other. So when something happens to us, know that it's the most merciful thing that could have happened to you. If you're a believer when it happens to you. When a calamity befalls and something happens and you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, help me. Then know that Allah is taking care of you. Don't worry. It seems like it's worse than it is. But ultimately, you're not going to know. You don't understand. Allah's wisdom is way beyond ours, but it's good for you. Right? And subhanAllah, it took a crummy plane like that to teach me that lesson in life. And sometimes, we never know. Right? For someone else, it could be a, a crummy car, <laughs> or a bus, or something else. Right? Or a train. But you know, everyone has their moments. And inshallah ta'ala, this is a moment for us to realize how merciful Allah is in His decree with us and for us. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us from what we heard. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaykum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inna al-muslimina wal-muslimati wal-mu'minina wal-mu'minati wal-qanitina wal-qanitati wal-sadiqina wal-sadiqati wal-sabirina wal-sabirati wal-khashi'ina wal-khashi'at والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات 
والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما